guys, Etan Sun here from Sunbros, and today we are going through another breakdown of the heroes, and we're going to be talking about assassins. Um, I hope you guys saw the tank and marksman breakdowns, breakdowns that we did. Now we're gonna do assassins, and we're gonna start with Butterfly, who's the one I have the most experience with, and I'm a really big fan of hers. So, first of all, assassin warrior mobility finisher. You guys see on the left side, attack damage is all the way maxed out. She's pretty insane. She's also very expensive, as you guys can see at the bottom, 18,888 gold. Let's go ahead and start with her passive. Her passive, on a kill on her assist, it resets the cooldown of all her abilities and restores 12% of her missing HP, which is pretty, which should be a frank about it. It's pretty overpowered. That's a pretty nutty and wonderful passive. So we love that passive. Second, we got her first ability is Whirlwind. Butterfly swings her blade in a full in a full R at nearby enemies. It's in full circle at nearby enemies, dealing a pretty good amount of damage and reducing their movement speed by 50% for two seconds. Second ability is Sword Propel. Butterfly throws her sword, dealing a bunch of damage to enemies in its path. Also increasing her attack speed by 50% for three seconds. That, that ability is actually really phenomenal. <clears throat> and of course, lastly, for ultimate backstab, Butterfly blinks behind the enemy with the lowest HP, prioritizing heroes, and stabs the target, dealing a bunch of damage and increasing her damage reduction by 60% and movement speed by 50% for one second. So increasing her damage reduction by 60%. So she takes 60% less damage for one second while increasing her movement speed by 50%. That's pretty insane. Her ultimate is actually is incredible. For those of you coming from the Mobile Legends world, her ultimate is going to be similar to Karina's or Fanny's. Um, Fanny's, it's going to actually be more like Fanny's ult, but it's going to have the ability with the passive uh, assassin. It's going to it's going to reset her uh, cooldown. So, pretty crazy. Um, it's gonna be really nice on her, but she's pretty cool. She's got two skins. She has the uh, What do we got the Academy skin kind of a schoolgirl look makes her blade kind of orange fiery looking pretty awesome And then she has the sailor skin Also pretty nice skin both her skins are pretty nice looking pretty well done uh, kind of a blue tint to her sword and then her first one actually is what color it's just a regular blade okay. all right next assassin up is raz and the rest of raz in game a few times raz is really cool he kind of reminds me of uh a lee sin from league of legends or a um he kind of reminds me of a cho from mobile legends but he's got the stainer skin which is actually a pretty nice looking skin and then he has the uh, Zulu warrior skin which is pretty cool too <clears throat> um, this looks like a tribal guy pretty awesome uh, for his passive is fancy football fit nah sorry his passive is fancy footwork Raz's footwork moves him closer to his enemies on his second and third consecutive normal attacks the third normal attack deals extra magic damage and knocks back and stuns enemies How's the passive, guys? Think about that. It's essentially, every third attack is gonna stun somebody. That's pretty insane. It's pretty. That's pretty legit. He's he's really strong. Um, Raz unleashes a powerful uppercut that deals a bunch of magic damage to enemies within range and knocks enemies into the air, restoring energy if this uh, if the ability hits an enemy. Um, so it's a nice little knock up uppercut ability. Next is Power Surge. Raz launches a projectile from his fist that deals damage to enemies in his path, briefly reducing their magic defense and movement speed, and restoring 25 energy if the ability hits enemy. Um, that's pretty nice. So he does, he throws a little projectile. That, that looks like Lee Sin's ability where he kind of throws a projectile. Now he can't teleport to it, but still, it kind of looks the same way. Um, then lastly, we have Raz's ult, Explosive KO. Raz throws an extremely powerful punch, dealing a bunch of magic damage to enemies in its path, knocking them back and reducing their attack damage for 2.5 seconds. It restores 25 energy if the ability hits an enemy. So it's going to 
all these builds are gonna uh, give energy because they all have a cost and they'll have a, a they'll have a refund if you hit an enemy hero with them. Um, but Raz has got a lot of crowd control. He's very very powerful. Does a lot of damage. Um, I guess his ability damage and his difficulty are maxed out pretty much at the bottom there. He's an assassin mage, and um, I can tell you from experience of having played against him, not with him yet, that he's really powerful and uh, somebody to look out for for sure. Alright, next on the list is Nakaroth. Nakaroth comes flying in on a, on a blade. Got the two blades. He freaking rocks out. He's an assassin warrior. His role is mobility. His ability damage and difficulty, as you see in the bottom left, is pretty strong. He is very expensive at 18,888. Um, he has one heroic skin. Um, and it kind of just gives him a nice little slick color change. I mean, pretty similar looking to the original, but it's a little slick color change. Um, Alright, so let's talk about his passive. Dread, du Dread Judge. Every fourth normal attack, bonus, uh, every fourth normal attack knocks the target into the air. Each time an ability hits an enemy, Nakroth gains 50% attack speed. Okay, that's really, that's really strong. A knockback on every fourth attack and attack speed boost every time an ability hits an enemy, so pretty legit. Uh, first ability, Jury Fury. Nakroth lunges forward and knocks the enemy, the target enemy into the air, dealing a pretty good amount of damage. The ability can be used again within 5 seconds of the first use before triggering the full cooldown. So I just want you guys to kind of think about this real quick. So I've never played Nakroth. I don't even know that I've played against him. Um, but, check it out. So, my fourth, every fourth ability I have a knock up. I can knock people up twice within five seconds with Jury Fury. So potentially I could freaking knock somebody up, auto attack, basic attack, whatever you want to call it, and then I can knock somebody up with that basic attack passive, and I can knock somebody up with Jury Fury. So I could potentially knock somebody up three times, bam, 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 with him, with just his first two abilities. So that's pretty impressive. A lot of crowd control for an assassin. Um, second ability is Death Sentence. Nakroth flips backwards and the next normal attack within three seconds becomes a, a horizontal sweep that deals a bunch of damage. Okay. And then lastly is his ultimate, Judgment's Blade. Nakroth swings his blades against enemies in range, dealing damage each hit. With the last hit knocking enemies into the air, he's immune to crowd control effects during his ability. The end part there that makes that pretty pretty legit. So the whole part where it makes him immune can be something that Nakroth can use to uh, essentially avoid abilities, uh, crowd control abilities. He can use that to kind of quote unquote dodge him if you will. But it sounds like it's going to knock people up in the air some more. So people are going to get knocked back up into the air. Um, he has a lot of knockups, guys. He's gonna be doing a lot of knocking people up. So that's a lot of crowd control for an assassin. So next, we're gonna look at, the of course, the famous Parker. Batman. He's an assassin warrior, mobility finisher, attack damage is all the way not, uh, maxed out. Uh, difficulty's pretty high too. Uh, to buy him, you have to use the currency in the game, and he has no skins. We're going to start at Cape Crusader's passing. When Batman approaches an enemy hero, his movement speed increased by 20%. That's a pretty nice ability. It's not super strong, but I think it definitely uh, has its, its bonuses. Uh, first ability, forearm strike. Batman attacks with his forearm blades, dealing damage to nearby enemies. One random enemy will take double damage. Okay, pretty interesting. So you're talking about at level six, it, t it does 440 damage, not including any bonus damage you get from his attack, his physical damage. And one takes double damage. You're talking about one of them taking 880 at level six with performance bonuses, easily go over 2000. Um, Batarang, second ability. Batman launches an explosive batarang that deals a pretty good amount of damage to enemies and reduces their movement speed. 24% of HP lost will be converted into additional physical damage. Three seconds later, enemies are stunned if attacked by Batman again, and Batman restores HP. That's a really long one. Let's break it down a little bit more. So, he's throwing a battering, deals damage, reduces the movement speed. 24% of HP lost, now that's his HP, 24% of his HP lost 
will be converted into additional physical damage three seconds later. Um, so the, you're already reducing their, their movement speed. So if you're in a situation where you're almost dead, and you throw this bad boy out, and you run away, because you've reduced their movement speed, remember every time you're near somebody, your movement speed gets increased because it was passive, and then yeah, you could do an extra 24% of their health and damage. So that's pretty nice. That's a lot. 24% of health loss. So if they're low and you're, you're low, that's the difference between life or death right there. Um, and then enemies hit are stunned if attacked by Batman again. So, really turn the tide in a fight where Batman's low and they're low or getting low and you're trying to finish them off. Now, Ultimate Dark Knight. Batman conceals himself behind a colony of bats and becomes invisible for one and a half seconds. Invisibility lasts for 30 seconds. Unless Batman stays within six units of an enemy hero for more than three seconds. So after one and a half seconds, he becomes invisible. He can be invisible for up to 30 seconds, as long as he doesn't get too close to an enemy for too long. If the ability is used again during invisibility, he will fly towards the target direction, dealing a whole bunch of damage to enemies in his path. Gains attacks 50% of attacks for 5 seconds after coming out of his ability. So, Batman's game seems to be really predicated upon movement speed, you know, mobi huge mobility, which as you can see is his first roll. And as a finisher, he does insane damage with attack speed bonuses and some nice damage bonuses to his abilities when um, used in the right order correctly. So that's Batman's abilities. Next we're gonna go on and take a look at Crick Knack. Crick Knack is the bug dude. Um, he's an assassin warrior. His role is mobility. Uh, nothing too crazy on the bottom left for his stuff. Pretty standard to Christ in 13.8. Has one ability. Kind of makes him all steel looking. It makes him look metallic instead of like a bug. Pretty cool. All right, his passive is bite. When Crick Knack's ability hits an enemy, the next normal attack is uh, going to be enhanced and deals additional 250 damage. So every physical attack after an ability does 250 extra damage, and I'm sure that scales with level. So that's pretty nasty. Ability one: Terrifying Plague. Crick Knack summons a plague of larva that deal 250 or to do physical damage and inflicts a target with a mark of horror. When Crick Deck attacks and marked enemies, they take additional magic damage equal to 10% of maximum HP. The cooldown of this ability is reduced by 3 seconds. So right off the bat, I can tell you that Crick Deck, between his first two abilities, is a bit of an on-hit damage dealer. So he's going to do 250 after he does you Terrifying Plague, you're going to do damage to him, you're going to inflict him with Mark of Horror, and then... When they're marked and you attack them, they're going to take an additional 10% of maximum HP plus the 250 physical damage they got from their passive. So they're going to take a pretty good amount of damage, and the cooldown of the ability is reduced by 3 seconds and restores uh, Quick Next of Mana. So, pretty legendary. That's a pretty legit combo with the, with the passive and the first ability. The second ability is Horde Rush. Quick Next lunges forward. With his enormous horns, dealing damage to enemies in his path, every every hero hit restores uh, HP for Cricknack. So pretty interesting. Doesn't do any kind of crowd control from what it sounds like, but damage looks good. Needs a little restoring of health there. His ultimate drone drop. Cricknack takes to the skies, significantly increasing his movement speed for a brief period. When casting this ability. While they are born, Cricknack attacks the target area and deals a bunch of damage to the enemies in the area, reducing their movement speed. So Cricknack has, from what I'm reading, zero craft control abilities, but he can restore some health. He can do some pretty crazy mobility by flying through the air, and he seems like he has a pretty good amount of damage, but we'll have to check, them, check him out a little bit more in depth in the future. Next, we're looking at Wukong, who is one of my favorites from League of Legends. Um, He's going to come in as a warrior assassin. Mobility controls his role. <clears throat> He's pretty even keel at the bottom left there. Hey, everyone. 18-8 is his price, and he has, has one skin. It is the Spader skin, or Asian skin. He looks pretty cool. I actually like the skin a lot. All right, first off, we have his passive God of War. Each time Wukong uses an ability, his next normal attack is enhanced and deals additional damage. And right off the bat, it's almost 500 extra damage, so... Pretty nutty. 
Wukong also tumbles toward the target, so he's gonna kind of teleport dash towards the target. Wukong's staff grants 10% critical chance permanently, so he starts off with 10% crit chance, which is a pretty nice, legit buff. And he teleports to the target after casting an ability and does extra damage to his next attack. That actually sounds uh, really phenomenal, to be honest with you guys. That sounds like one of the stronger passes I've seen in the game as of yet. An extra 500 damage after each ability on a base attack and he teleport to the target. Woo! Not to mention the, temp the free 10% critical chance permanent increase. That's not bad. Okay. First ability, Shadow Clone. Wukong temporarily, temporarily disappears and gains 40% movement speed for one second. It's a good engage and a good disengage ability. <clears throat> it's always nice for anyone to have that, but especially an assassin. Second, Great Siege. Or Great Sage, sorry. Wukong tumbles towards one specific direction, gaining 100 armor and magic defense for three seconds. Again, good engage and disengage ability. It's going to keep you alive if you're dying. And it's going to potentially get you off to a much, sol more, much more solid start to the fight um, if you're engaging. Lastly, his ultimate monkey business. Wukong releases the energy, knocking nearby enemies into the air, doing damage and stunning them for one second. So, that's a very quality CC. It's a one second stun and a knock up. Two separate things. Um, so, from what I can tell right here from reading him, his, his main thing is mobility. Um, he has some crowd control abilities with his ultimate, but he's really just gonna do a bunch of uh, basic attack damage Every time you do an ability, he's gonna freaking hit like a truck and uh, that's kind of gonna be Wukong's game So I'm excited to check him out um, I'm a big fan of Wukong. I think actually his toolkit sounds really 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 positive so excited to check that out. Next we got Zephyrus Who's got the double staff and he is a warrior assassin. This rolls mobility. Um, he is obtained via first purchase bonus. So whenever you buy your first in-game currency, I think you can actually buy the lowest amount, which is $100. Uh, you actually get seconds. He has one skin, which is the Sentinel skin. It's pretty cool. It gives him a little bit more BA looking look. Changes some of the colors on the skin. Pretty nice. All right, first we have a passive, Unwavering Death. Every 3% of HP lost grants 1% damage reduction. So the more damage he loses, or the more HP he loses, the tankier he becomes. Death Rift. Zephyr, Zephyr lunges forward, dealing a bunch of damage to enemies along the path. His next normal attack deals a bunch more damage and reduces enemy movement speed by 25% for 2 seconds. So, uh, movement... You know, it gives him a lunge, deals damage, and his next basic attack deals more damage. And he does a little debuff of uh, movement speed, so that's pretty nice. Um, next, his second ability is Death's Flurry. Zephyrus unleashes a series of rapid attacks, dealing a bunch of damage with each attack to the enemy in front of him. Each on hit on an enemy restores HP to Zephyrus. Okay, interesting. Um, and then Death from Above, Zephyrus attacks from above. Dealing quite a bit of damage to enemies in the target area, knocking them into the air for a period, a brief period of time. Enemies hit are inflicted with the Thunder Crash debuff, and they take an additional uh, bit of damage when hit with by Zephyr's normal attack. So again, he is going to be he has some crowd control abilities, but for the most part, his abilities are all going to help buff his basic attacks. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And lastly, we are looking at the brand new hero from Strike Kings. It's going to be Zuka, the Panharma Master. So he, first of all, looks wicked awesome. Really great look to the panda. I love him. He's got a freaking a true awesome uh, bamboo staff. And then we have his first game, Cody. And it gives him a real martial art legend look, which is pretty awesome. Uh, he's a warrior assassin coming at mobility. You guys see his attack damage and difficulty are off the charts, almost fully maxed out. 18.8 is his cost. And let's take a look at his passive. The Chi. Every 20 seconds, dealing damage to an enemy hero triggers Zuka's Chi, increasing his attack damage by a pretty good amount. Percentage. This looks like 14, 15, 5, 17, 18, 5, 20%. It looks like it's based on level for the next 8 seconds. So the attack damage increased by 20% level 14, level 13. It's a big boost in damage. So for eight seconds, so think about this guys, for eight seconds, he's gonna get 20% more attack damage and it has a 20 second cooldown. 
So, you're talking about 12 seconds per game, or, you know, every, every 12 seconds. He's going to have no bonus for 12 seconds, but he's going to have the bonus for eight. So, you can make a good case that he almost has that buff for 20%, for almost 50% of the time, which is pretty good. Uh, his first ability is Pain on a Stick. Zuko raises his bamboo staff and charges forward, dealing a bunch of damage to all the nearby enemies. This ability can be used again within 5 seconds of the first use, and each use enhances Zuka's next normal attack, increasing its range and dealing additional damage. Okay, and then his second ability, Panda Chariot. Let me see this real quick. Interesting. Interesting ability, first ability. We're going to kind of see that a little bit more about that one to figure out exactly what it does. But second ability, Panda Chariot. Zuko rolls forward, dealing damage to enemies along the way. On a successful hit, Zuko gains a shield that absorbs damage for two and a half seconds and enhances his next normal attack to deal additional damage and send enemies flying. So, pretty good crowd control. Um... Interesting. Yeah, crowd control on this one. And then, lastly, his, his ultimate Skyfall. Zuka leaps up and crushes his enemies from above, dealing damage to enemies in the target area and stunning them for one second. It also enhances his next normal attack. So he, again, sounds like a guy who's going to have a lot of enhanced basic attacks, normal attacks, and some pretty good crowd control. So <clears throat> that is Zuka for you guys. He is our final assassin. So that wraps up this video of the uh, beginner's breakdown on assassins. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel as we're going to keep putting up a bunch of Strike of Kings content. And uh, comment below. Let us know what you guys thought about the video. What you guys think about the assassins. And, you know, which one's your favorite. What abilities you're looking for to try it out. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.